Welcome back to Pokemon Legends Arceus. Last episode, we quelled the final frenzied Lord Avalug, and today we are back in the village, possibly for the last time, because we are to report to Captain Kamado now, and I'm guessing begin the end of the story. Now, I actually heard from you guys in the comments that after we do this, we're not going to be able to complete any more requests, but I wonder if that's like right now, or maybe after we talk to the captain. Because there's definitely some more requests to do, including our favorite side quest. Zeke's sister Wanda is lost once again. There's also seems to be some stuff on the blackboard. So I hope that uh, talking to Kamado doesn't lock us out of all of these just yet. Because I at least want to kick off the episode with some story. So if you guys are excited, make sure to smash that like button. And let's report to the captain. Each of the Pokemon nobles became frenzied. And now each of them has been quelled. Aw, oh, thanks to us, we still have no explanation for why this calamity befell us, but I'm glad to see it put to an end. And to think peace would be restored to Hisui by the hand of a mysterious Riftborn helper. When tomorrow dawns, it will dawn on a world restored to normalcy. At long last, we'll be able to return to our normal lives. Go, nourish yourself at the Wallflower, and allow yourself a good, long rest. Don't forget, the Survey Corps' work is not over. It doesn't end until our people can live here in Hisui, without fearing the Pokemon around us. I like how they think it's all over, but the Rift is clearly still over Mount Coronet, so... I don't know what you're talking about, bro. But at least we get to enjoy that sweet potato mochi! I don't actually know if it's sweet. I mean, some potatoes are sweet. Thanks! This nice, sizable helping of potato mochi, Benny. Oh, and if there's anything else that you recommend, by all means, bring it out! Bro, he doesn't know how to make anything else. I don't even know what you expect. <laughs> Having the nobles all quelled puts a grave threat to rest. Now it's time we focused on our survey work. Though, we still can't let our guard down around regular wild Pokémon, of course. I certainly had my reservations as to whether Avalug needed quelling, but if it means bringing calm to everyone, then I suppose we did the right thing. I'm still not sure, dude. I feel like something's definitely up if they keep mentioning it. Yes, someone might have been under attack by some frenzied noble this very moment if Renji hadn't come falling out of the sky to us. I still wonder though, just what is the space-time rift anyway? And what will make it finally go... wait. If the Rift were to vanish, would that leave Orenji stranded here? Oh gosh, I didn't even think about that. Uh, I wouldn't really mind though. Well, our little team is certainly very practiced at investigating things by now. We'll look into the matter and find a solution, I've no doubt. And even if we don't, you'll always have a home here in Jubilee Village, Orenji. Now then, tomorrow is soon upon us, and it'll be another hard day at work for the Survey Corps. Don't forget what we've got our sights on. Nothing less than a completed Pokedex. That's right, we'll get it done, with Orenji in the lead and me as the Valiant Assistant! Assistant? Come now, Akari! Don't sell yourself short! You're a full-fledged member of the Survey Corps, too! Well, thanks for that, Professor. And then I guess I'd better eat my fill and get plenty energy for another long day tomorrow! Man, Captain Kamado saying everything's gonna return to normal kind of hits me double right now, not just in the game. But like in real life, I feel the last few weeks or just this past week has been so hectic with Legends Arceus and trying to get out all these videos for you guys. Jesus, what is that? It's not even Kaboom, it says Bakum. I knew some was up, dude. Oh God, this actually just gave me some deja vu. Maybe not deja vu, but like a flashback of a real life thing that happened when I lived in Puerto Rico. This gas station, or I guess where they hold all the gas, exploded. It was like, like 4 a.m. so it woke everybody up. It was freaking terrifying, dude. I remember waking up with my heart racing. I thought it was an earthquake, but... I'm guessing this has something to do with the time rift. Oh yeah, that's not looking good, dude. Looks like the tear is actually even bigger. Like the lightning has spread wider. Ooh, you done oh. f***ed up, Kamado. I knew it, bro. Some sort of dreadful energy seems to be pouring from the rift in space-time. Now the entire sky's gone red. Feels kind of familiar, doesn't it? I've word from the commander. You have to report to his office at once. Oh gosh, we're in trouble again, aren't we? Shouldn't have quelled all those frenzied. 
The way the sky has changed, it is ominous. Very ominous indeed. What's this about, Commander? You did call us here to discuss the quelling of all the nobles, didn't you? Did you not see the sky just now, Irda? That can wait! There is a more pressing concern here that must be addressed. The first strike of that strange lightning, the one that drove Cleavor into a frenzy. It struck the night that Orenji fell from the sky, did it not? It only seems natural to think that the two events might be linked in some way. Are you gonna blame it all on me? Who or what are you really, Orenji? Damn, bro, come on! I'm just a kid! And a Survey Corps member! How dare you, sir! What, you don't think I can take you on now? I've grown up a lot! I got a Hisuian Gooder! Have you seen how big that thing is? You ain't gonna flip that thing, Kamado! Indeed, you've done all I ordered, but that does not answer the question of who you really are. You came from the Rift, as did the Lightning. You're connected to these frenzies, are you not? Did you think to gain our trust by quelling the frenzies you yourself brought about? And having gained our trust, what then? What is it you're really after here? No, man, I swear is it. Hold on, Commander. Yeah, back me up, please. I need some help right now, homies. Exactly, and besides, do you really think he's got the sort of fearsome power it take to make all this happen? Let me ask you in turn, can you prove beyond a doubt that he is free from guilt? This person! This stranger appeared out of a rift in space-time! Who here can guarantee he is who he says, and he who can be trusted? But that's... no one can do that! You're asking us to prove a negative! How is anyone supposed to prove the absence of all doubt? Come on, let's be reasonable! What is Arenji supposed to do then? Yeah, think long and hard about that one. He will be given the chance to investigate this latest disaster, but not as a member of the Galaxy team. He remains a suspect, unless he can clear his name. There are those in our village who cannot trust a stranger like you who fell from the sky, and so I must ask you to leave. You are no longer welcome in the Galaxy team, no! Consider yourself banished from this village until you can explain why these calamities keep befalling our good people. No. Until you've restored our world to its rightful state and proven your innocence beyond doubt. Is that clear, Silene? Yes, sir. How can you act so heartless? Don't you believe in Orangi? Do not attempt to intervene on his behalf. I will do what I must as the commander of the Galaxy Expedition Team. But I have not forgotten your deeds, nor the unusual skill you've displayed. That is why I have chosen to let you walk out of here free, rather than clap you in chains. Oh my gosh, bro. Banished? From the whole village? I should have done those side quests. Oh my god, no! Look at John's face, though! You're to be expelled from the village! What? Why? Orders are orders. I feel like Silene doesn't want to really do it. Let's go. Come on, Silene, pull through for us, please. This way. Oh, do we actually have to walk? Wow. Th I thought that was still a cutscene for a second. I guess the graphics are pretty much the same in cutscene and in game. But that's not really surprising. I mean, it's not like the graphics in general are the craziest. It looks pretty good right now, though, with the red lighting in the sky. But this is such a sad moment, dude. Look at everybody staring at us so sad. Oh my god, dude. It's like I murdered somebody. Like, Kamado really exiled us. What is wrong with that, dude? I, I'm getting so sad just reading all of these little speech bubbles. Silene, please, you gotta pull through for a homie. We can take it from here, ma'am. Oh, man. Understood. However, the decision was mine to accept this stranger as a member of the Survey Corps. It is only right that I should personally escort him from the village and to the Fieldlands camp. I'll also see him off. As will I, naturally. I'll allow it. 
We got the whole squad saying bye. Then I'll mark you all down as bound for the field lands. Safe travels. And good riddance. What is this music? Is it finally over? That was scary. I can't believe the boss would do this. You were acting on his own orders when you quelled the frenzied nobles. Quite right. Moreover, even if you did happen to fall from the sky, that hardly gives you the power to turn it red. This is utterly intolerable, and I might add, absurdly unscientific. As a man of science, I must fight such illogical thinking tooth and nail. You must not. You will only cause Arenji more pain if you're driven out as well for defending him. She's got a point, but still, there are others who might offer help. You've been an aide to both the Diamond Clan and the Pearl Clan. Of course, perhaps Adamon or Hirda might take you in? But wouldn't that make them traitors to the commander? I guess they don't really care though. Perhaps you could try to go find Leon? He's likely to be at Grand Tree Arena. Don't die alone out there. That's in order. I'll ensure you have all you need to complete the survey the commander has tasked you with. If I might offer my advice, in this life, you will meet with both admiration and abuse from others. How others choose to view you is a choice only they can make. You cannot make it for them. All that truly matters is that you hold firm to your own values. Damn. What of the dream I first shared with you on Prelude Beach to complete the Pokedex? That dream simply won't come true without you. We gotta find our own way. And right now, I guess all we can do is seek out Leon. Dude, this is so creepy. With the music and the sky all red. I should have probably talked to them one last time. I don't know what they would have really said, but it's too late now. Let us ride on word here. Even though I'm pretty sure we could just teleport there. I mean, it gives us a little bit of time to reflect on everything that just happened. First off, those words of wisdom at the end from Silene, like, that is very true, dude. Something that I've always tried to live by is not really care what others think of you. I feel it's something that I've kind of preached on my channel for people that have watched for a while might know. Always be true to yourself and not let what others think bother you, but I know it's a little bit difficult. The other thing, obviously, is the exilement from Kamado. Feels very much like a old school Japanese movie, like a samurai movie. I feel that that would happen pretty often. Though usually it'd be because of something more serious, like I said, murder for example. Even though I guess you could say we uh, murdered the sky, or at least Kamado seems to think so. I don't know if I fully believe that he thinks it's our fault. I think he's just panicking and really wants someone to solve the problem. And like the only way that uh, he can get us to do it is to banish us. I mean, he's relied on us this whole time so far, so why not rely on us for one last task? As we go talk to Leon. You! What in the world did you do? What, you think it was me too? Look at the size of that rift! If lightning starts pouring from it, all the Pokemon in Hisui could be thrown into a frenzy! The entire clan is in panic now! It wasn't me, bro! Come on, I thought you out of all people would believe me, please! I need help! Help? Huh, well, uh, that's not exactly something I can do. It's not that I wouldn't like to help you, but it would put Irda in a difficult position. I truly do wish that I could repay you for quelling Cleavor's frenzy. You must know that. But there's nothing I can alone do for you. Warden Mai might be able to help you, though. She's a caring woman, after all. You'll most likely find her at the Warren Bridge. I believe it's a very significant place for her. I'm certain that somewhere in the vastness of Hisui, there's a place for you as well. So you're ditching it off to the Diamond Clan instead. Yeah, I figured that the Diamond and Pearl Clans don't want to get involved because even though they're like their own thing, I feel like if they go against Captain Kamado, it would put them both at risk. So I don't think that either of them are gonna be able to help us, but we might as well go check. The Warren Bridge is actually above us, so let me call on Braviary, and yeah, that actually worked out really well. 
Because here is my... Please tell me you can help. My, 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 what a frightful sky. Such a disturbing sight would be enough to put anyone ill at ease. You don't know what brought this about, do you? At least someone believes us, but I'm trying to find out. It almost looks like Zygarde cells in the sky. Those, like, shapes? I suppose it was too much to expect that you could have already had an answer to all this. I heard from our leader what happened. You can't return to that village, can you? But I'm afraid the Diamond Clan cannot be the ones to save you. Come on. The Diamond Clan could end up at war with the Galaxy Team if things went badly. I think you would regret that as much as anyone. The Great Wordier took a liking to you. I want to offer you my support, but... Forgive me. I cannot help you with this. Do not abandon hope. Time solves all things. And besides, you seem to have a talent for making your own way in the world. I have no doubt you'll continue to find a path to walk. So what, we gotta go visit all the lords? Please don't tell me that's what's happening. Like, we already talked to a representative from each of the clans, so... I feel like talking to all the other ones wouldn't really help much. Huh? What cry is that? Shinx? Or maybe... Oh, yeah, it is Shinx. What are you doing here, little buddy? Usually they're pretty aggressive, but this one seems more friendly. Aw. Looks like it's just us and the Pokemon now. Go to mommy and daddy. At least you have some, unlike me. Strange events seem to follow you wherever you go, don't they? Volo. The only person in this world who can maybe offer us an explanation. Found you at last, Orenji. I've been looking all over for you, you know. What would I do if I were to lose one of my favorite customers? Don't worry. I've already heard what happened. A good merchant knows well the importance of staying abreast of all the latest news. It seems you're in quite the pinch. No place for you among the Diamond Clan or Pearl Clan. To say nothing of how poorly the Galaxy and Matima treated you. But not to worry. Are you going to offer me a place in the Ginkgo Guild? There are still corners of the Hisui region where we can stash you away in secret. I know a spot that'll be the perfect hideaway. Leave it all up to me. Volo to the rescue. Finally, someone takes pity to us. I guess. <laughs> Here we are. Oh. I know, I know. It's no palace. But you know the saying about beggars and choosers. The Saint Chipotle? Where even are we? Can we check on the map? Oh. The Ancient Retreat. I don't even know where this is, but what the heck? There's so many outbreaks. I can't even go check them. That's kind of sad. Oh, it's like this tiny little area right here. Okay. So we've got Kohita's home. And a workbench. Who the frick is Kohita? Oh, there's even a tiny little garden over there. Oh my god, what? Shirking your work to come pester me again. Even beneath a bleeding sky, you never change. Always a pleasure, Mistress Kohita. But I'm afraid I'm not here today to learn more of Hisui's myths and legends. Who is this? No mistress, thank you. Just Kohita. And this is... Why, Orenji's the man of the hour. He's the one who quelled the frenzy of all the Pokemon nobles, believe it or not. Ah, the poor wretch you spoke of. Lost in time and space. I feel like you're also lost in fashion, at least. Dear me, lost one. It seems I'll be able to fulfill my duty at long last, thanks to you. And that is... Indeed, I am to guide you, lost one. For the task of preventing great disaster falls to you. The rift in space-time must be mended, lest time and space themselves be thrown out of balance. But come, you may enter, my dear hideaway. There's much to be told. Am I the only one that's uh, very confused right now? Who the frick is this lady? 
Why is she dressed like this? The space-time rift is said to be a portal to innumerable other dimensions. In one such realm, far and farther still from ours, dwells Almighty Sinnoh. The pearl? Bro, I don't believe it's diamond or pearl, but I'll go with diamond, because I always liked that game more. The expanse from antiquity to eternity, and the expanse to all sides above and below. Time traces the path we tread from the here and now into the future. While space yawns all-encompassingly, surrounding us in every direction. You see, don't you? The two together, time and space, comprise all creation, the universe. How can one claim that either is greater than the other, as those two clans do? You really can't. We know better, of course, but in this age and day, I feel like that would kind of blow people's minds. Perhaps the truth is clearer to a wanderer such as you, one who has known other ages. Now listen, lost one. Here is what you must do. Hisui holds three lakes of great importance, Lake Verity, Lake Valor, and Lake Acuity. At each dwells a Pokemon said to embody one aspect of the mind. Complete the trials each will set you, and bear their gifts to the Shrouded Ruins. There, you may receive the Red Chain, and with it, perhaps, you can bind the world together. Bind the world, you say? You mean it won't close the rift? Kindly spare me your doubts, young man. I know the old words and what they bid us do. How true they are isn't mine to know. And regardless of their truth, I am bound to pass them on. How callous of my ancestors to leave their legends to their children without a thought for the hardship it would cause them. Bro, I finally realize who this is. This is Cynthia from the present. Oh my god, everything is like the dots. I was trying to figure out what those little dangling pendants were. And obviously the black clothes. Like this has to be Cynthia from the future who also got sent back to the past a long time ago. Volo or Kamado or someone mentioned that there was once another space-time rift. And I'm guessing back then, Arceus sent Cynthia to the past and she closed it, but she was stuck in the past and so now she's grown old. Hence, the white hair? What kind of name is Kohita? You know your duty and you'll do it, won't you? Of course! I got you, former champion! There is nobility in knowing what must be done and seeing to it. Hold up. God's calling. You can see the locations of three lakes marked on the phone. So just like the good old Sinnoh, we've got to go visit the three lakes. Oh, you've got materials too. Okay. For free, you mean? What about the pastures, though? That is a problem, isn't it? What shall we do about that indeed? Oh, wait a minute. Apra, the one that's been in Silene's quarters this whole time? What was that cry? Have we now a lost Pokemon as well as a lost child? Do see to it, please. How could I refuse you, ma'am? This is so weird, dude. It's literally two Cynthia's. Or, well, the actual Cynthia, and then the one from the past. I love it. I feel that this should create some kind of complication, though. Meeting your own doppelganger from the past. Hello, hello, Abra. Where did you teleport in from now, little fella? Obviously, from Silene's quarters. And it's got a letter. You take a closer look. Tuorenji, you may use my Pokemon as a go-between to access the pastures in Jubilee Village. I've also ensured that you'll be able to utilize our base camps without issue. I have every confidence in your ability as an Adept Survey Corps member to bring this bizarre situation under control promptly. Sincerely, Silene. Survey Corps Captain, Galaxy Expedition Team. Damn, she put the whole signature in there. Good tidings from the letter then? Yep, but it's a secret to everyone. Now then, so we're to visit Three Lakes? Wait, who said anything about we? Doesn't sound like an easy task, that's for sure. It sure would be wonderful to have a kind soul who might help us out. Quite the opportunist, aren't you, Volo? Yo! Tell me, Ottoman, yes! Daddy's here too! I've managed to reassure my people for now. The Wardens are keeping a close eye on their nobles too. Seems all's quiet for the moment. And so, here we are. But still, we'll never get away with openly aiding you. If we were to undermine the commander's direct orders, relations would grow. 
strained. A long story short, we want to help, but without drawing attention, so it'll just be one of us. Me or her, it's up to you, though the answer should be obvious. No, what? We gotta choose Adamon or Irida? You're tearing me apart, Ar Arceus. I honestly feel like it'd be unfair for me to choose between them, so we're gonna leave it up to fate. Here, I've got Zashian on one side and Zamazenta on the other. Pokemon's sword is blue, so Zashian will represent Automon, which means Zamazenta will represent Irida. And here we go! It's going to be... I can't even tell because it's so blurry, but I'm pretty sure that's Zashian? Indeed. It looks like we're going with Automon. Obviously, you'll choose me, right? Who gave you that Celestica Flute in the first place? That's right, this strapping young man! You know, I w probably would have picked him anyway because he looks like Ren Goku and we're Tanjiro. So then, the leftover leader will... Yeah, what is Irida gonna do? Leftover? I'm not someone's scraps! I'll be keeping watch on the commander. I imagine I'll hear something useful from him. Of course, of course. And the lucky chosen one comes with us to the lakes. We can fill you in on the details as we go. Are we actually gonna have to catch the lake legendaries? Well, the first task will be to decide which of the Hisui region's three great lakes to visit. Oh, do we actually get to pick? Or is it gonna be picked for us? I don't really care either way. I'm counting on you to handle this, Ottoman. Don't cause Renji more trouble! The Trial of Lake Verity. Ah, so we don't get to choose. Oh, wait, maybe we do. We got the three trials or three missions for the three trials. Heck yeah. Anyway, this will transfer some Pokemon. Oh, man, but we can't actually go to the village. I wanted to see if maybe we could switch Rotom's form because I didn't know we wouldn't be able to do any more side quests. But earlier, I talked to Ginter and he was actually selling a mechanical circular saw, which I'm pretty sure is the item we need to change Rotom into its lawnmower form. There's only one way to find out, so let's uh, go into our quarters and pray that it's not a fan. <gasps> yes, it's the lawnmower. Let's go, dude. So this will be our final member of our team. We're gonna grab our little Rotom here and enter the motor from oven to... An amazing invention. And now this is going to be our final team for the last challenge of Hisui, if this is really the end. So first, we're gonna go ahead and nickname our Zoroark and maybe Rotom, I haven't really come up with a name with it, but at least our Zoroark is now gonna be known as Scarlet. And we're also gonna feed her some nice EXP candies since she's so far behind the rest of the squad. Let's go with those two larges and oh my gosh, all the way to 37. And mastered its moves, very good. Uh, let's give you some more of these medium candies. I don't know if I wanna do all of them. How high level are you gonna go from this? Probably past Rotom, right? Oh my, okay, all the way to 45. So Rotom is now our lowest level. And now we'll go through and make sure everybody's got the right moves. Ooh, Charlie can learn Psycho Cut and Dark Pulse and Hydro Pump. So you really could have a special attacking Samurai if you wanted, but mine is definitely more on the physical side. So we're gonna go with this. Koda's got something new called Headlong Rush, which is a ground type move. And I believe the one that we saw the Alpha Torterra use, that's definitely a new attack there and very powerful. Plus it gets stabbed from being ground type. So definitely gonna teach it that. Scarlet has got Nasty Plus Shadow Ball. Oh yeah, we definitely want some of that. And this is going to be our final team heading into the final challenge of Hisui. So let's step outside of Cynthia, I mean, Kobiha. I, I totally forgot her name already, but uh, we've got the three lakes to go visit. I think you can actually choose which one you want to go to. There's Lake Verity, Valor, or Acuity. So we'll do them in order and hit up Lake Verity first, which happens to be in the Obsidian Fieldlands. So off we go to our destiny, Lake Verity. We actually went here a long time ago, but we couldn't really do much back then. Now that we've got Braviary, I suppose we can just fly there. Even if I suck at controlling Braviary. Whoa, I just realized how many more areas we can go to with this new ride Pokemon. 
And if we call it from up here, we can go even higher. So we should be able to just fly right over this uh, sort of cliff ridge thing and just get right into the lake. Look at those Lux Rays. I ain't messing with none of you guys. We're going straight for this legend. Dive, Braviary! Right into the rock! Okay, I didn't mean it literally. Oh, what the heck? They're actually waiting for us here. They say this lake actually used to be a volcano. Then it erupted, leaving a huge crater that filled with water. And so, Lake Verity was born. Cool story, bro. It is protected by a Pokemon called Mesprit. It was when Mesprit took flight that people first learned the joys and sorrows of living. Or that's how the old tales go anyway. So are we actually going to have to catch them? Just like in Diamond and Pearl? Dude! Come on! It's been so long! You just couldn't help yourself, could ya? You nasty little freak. Wow. The power of... The, <laughs> the cave! It just disappeared from nowhere! Is that the arc phone the professor was going on about? Let's do this, old Reggie! Mistress Kohita seemed quite intent that you would have to prove yourself to all three of the Pokemon that guard these lakes. This challenge was never meant for the faint of heart. Legendary Pokemon, you say? I have a bit of a history hunting those down, so I think we'll be alright. There's something about this place I can't quite put into words. What does it look like? Oh my god! Hisuian Gudra! Well, if you hadn't caught one at this point, then uh, I guess this would be your chance. Trounce that thing, Orenji. Prove to the Pokemon of the lake how strong you are. We got you, bro. Even though I don't think we really have anything super effective. I mean, it's Dragon and Steel type, so I guess Ground would work. Let's go with uh, Coda then. Oh wait, I always forget that you don't need to actually have the Pokemon leading your squad anymore. You can just switch them out whenever you want from just the menu, I guess. The main game. Words are hard, man. It's pretty late. I had to redo all those cutscenes, like I said. So at this point, I'm recording this at like 1 a.m. And my neighbors probably hate me, but it's okay. We're doing this for the content. Gudra has become obscured, which is not great. We do have the headlong rush, though. 100 power, 100 accuracy. Let's go. Full body tackle. And, of course, we miss because of the obscurity. Oh, my God. You have Hydro Pump. I forgot. But Coda, the grit pebbles are coming through right now. Please hit it. Yes, my dude. Let's go. That's not quite going to one-shot, though. I'm guessing you could actually catch these. Hisuian forms if you wanted to. I suppose we could test it now since uh, Koda's already gone down. So let's go into our OG Charlie who is so small compared to that Gudra. I don't even think that's an alpha. Oh wait, obviously it's an alpha. You can see it in its eyes. But yeah, let's first try and see if we can indeed catch it. And it looks like we can. Okay. Never know if this might work. Oh, I should have gone into Rotom instead and then Thunder Waved and we would have had a way higher chance of uh, getting it. Now, we're going to have to take a dr uh, Dragon Pulse. I was about to say Dark Pulse, but that's a little different. Uh, thankfully, it's no longer obscured, so we can actually go for our strong style, Ceaseless Edge. And that newly steroided attack stat is probably going to finish it. Oh, come on, man. I feel like at this point, we might as well try to catch it again. Because it's going to die to the splinter damage anyway. But I guess we would want Charlie to survive. I mean, you never know if it might just catch. Why am I even bothering to catch it? We already have our own Hisuian Gudra. And now we are so dead. Charlie, no, I'm sorry. Oh, I thought maybe there was a small chance we could have lived there, but of course not. The Splinter doesn't even finish it either. You know what? Let's have Rotom get some more experience then. Even though it actually doesn't have anything super effective or even neutral, I think even Hex will be not very effective, but... If we go for a strong style, it should definitely finish it, dude. Those teeth. I love Rotom Moform. It's just so cool. Especially in Hisui. Like, what are you doing here? First Pokemon down. But where's the Mesprit? I can tell by watching that you and the Pokemon you've caught in those little balls truly understand one another. Now, let's see about the Pokemon of the lake. Ah, uh, yes. The more important thing that we were here for. Or did you forget? Oh, cheat. It's Mesprit. Looking just at his... It always has. 
Do we just have to catch it? Or just walk up to it? Your emotions, share them with me. You can talk? Not a chance. Oh my god, that looks hideous. Why couldn't they fix this? Like, for such an important cutscene. Like, seriously? Now I don't even want to give you my emotions. Just because you ruined my immersion. Oh, okay, fine. You can have them. And the weird graphics, too. So it speaks from its mind straight to yours. Makes sense for a Pokemon that embodies an aspect of the mind, I guess. When you fell to this land, what stirred in your heart? Uh, definitely surprise? I feel like bewilderment fits too, but I think I was more just surprised that it was a time travel story. That's how you know it's true. How did it feel to bond with Pokemon and work together? Exciting, bizarre, heartening, all of those honestly, but mainly exciting. What did you feel when you mingled with Hisui's clans? We're all so different, it's a wide world. I don't know! I mean, they're not really that different. A lot of them are like ancestors that feel familiar, so I'm gonna go with this second option. What did you feel when cast out of the Galaxy Team? Dude, depression! Life is complicated. I guess bitter is the closest thing to sadness. It's more like angry though. But, take this piece of the spirit to bind the world once more. What? The heck is this? Is that a ball of light? Or, the uh, stone? Mesprit's plume. Okay, looks like a letter to me. Hey, I thought you could talk. What was that all about? I went Super Saiyan for a second. Maybe Bespirit was the one blessing us all those other times. I can't even imagine what that must feel like, having a Pokemon talk to you without words. Well, the world's full of mysteries, I guess. I can hardly even be surprised at things like these after seeing the sky itself so warped. Now, we've two lakes left to visit. And a whole bunch of fainted Pokemon. You want to heal them for me, Anamon? Okay, of course not. So on to the second lake then. Looks like that worked out well, Orenji. Gotta admit, you sure know plenty about Hisui Volo. That's right. You could say it's because I'm a merchant, but mostly I'm just naturally filled with curiosity. I want to know exactly what happened in the past that led us to this particular present. Or more accurately, I suppose. I want to know where I came from and where I'm headed. I want to know my path, so to speak. I think we'd all like some answers on that. I don't properly know how we came to worship Almighty Sinnoh. I've even got some questions about its true nature. Weighty matters to ponder for sure, but we have important tasks before us. Do you want to return to Mistress Kohita's home? Eh, we'll be alright. Could use some healing, but... Oh wait, what? Perfect! I'd like to see what she thinks of our progress. Okay, I guess. We can't just, like, go on to the next lake already? Maybe we actually had to come back here and get some more cutscene. Oh my jeez. This is gonna be a long episode, isn't it? Ah, Mesprit's Plume. So the legends told it true? The red chain must be real as well. I guess. But this all makes no sense! <laughs> These Pokemon represent our minds, and they'll give us this thing, and it'll let us bind the world and solve all this? But how? Why? You're asking too many questions, man. Just let it happen. Your doubts suggest a keen intellect. I see you're not your clan's leader for nothing. Without the mind, with a rift to widen and the world to end, would we even know it? One might even say the world, time, space, and all creation exists only because our minds are there to perceive it. Perhaps the Red Chain's purpose is to let one see creation as it truly is. I get it even not yeah, I, I'm with you there, Ottoman. Such are myths, my child, teaching us about the world in their own incomprehensible ways. They urge us to think more for ourselves on the nature of Almighty Sinnoh and on the nature of the world in which we dwell. You're absolutely right! Myths and legends are such fascinating things to study! In any case, all we have to do is complete two more trials and we'll get the red chain. 
And then maybe we'll finally understand how nonchalant you sound. How confident of success to which you contribute nothing. Jesus, Kohita. Absolute savage. You tag along only for the chance to gawk at more ancient ruins. God damn, relax, girl. Oh, nice. Our Pokemon were healed up. So on to the next lake we go. And that will be, I guess, Acuity. I don't really care at this point. We'll save the best for last or just the Meyer lens for last. I actually definitely like the Ice Lens more, so the Crimson Meyer lens are not saving the best for last. Uh, let's teleport over to the Pearl Settlement. Thankfully, we got all these camps earlier. I imagine if you hadn't explored the whole map, like if you try to just speed run the game or something, this part would definitely slow you down if you hadn't collected all those camps earlier. But uh, thankfully we did, so we can climb our way up here. Feels like just yesterday we were here at this lake. Oh, that's the wrong ride Pokemon. It literally was yesterday, wasn't it? What am I talking about? I'm like half expecting to find a shiny right now. This would be like the craziest time to find one, which is just my luck. Here we are, Lake Acuity. You know, I've been told it actually contains seawater as well. Nobody knows why though. Could be a fluke of geography, or perhaps it's connected to a Pokemon somehow. What? You mean connected to the ocean? Lake Acuity is protected by the Pokemon Uxie. When Uxie took flight, the knowledge to solve problems was born into people's minds. That's when the what the stories say anyway. Oh no, please, no more of this, bro. Come on! Why would you show us such nasty things? Despicable. Well, at least uh, it's powerful enough to bust a hole right through the wall. A tool that can make caves simply appear from nowhere is quite a handy one to have. Let's go, Orenji. I imagine there may be Pokemon in there, protecting the lake's guardian. Take care. Why didn't you warn us about that before? With Lake uh, Verdi, was it? Maybe this is the first one you're supposed to visit, like naturally. Now, let's see what's waiting for us here. My guess will be Hisuian Braviary? Or apparently Zoroark, that makes a lot more sense. Because we already fought Braviary. I know you don't need me to tell you this, Orenji, but I've still got to say it. Be careful around that thing. Okay, I'll try. Hisuian Zoroark, definitely weak to dark type moves. So let's lead off with Charlie. Oh, wow! That thing looks so dope! We've actually got our own Hisui and Zoroark, but it's kind of weird since it's normal and ghost type. It actually doesn't affect itself. But I think it did have Snarl at one point, which is a dark move. So that could technically beat it. Charlie's the one taking a beating right now, though. But if we go for an agile style ceaseless edge, it looks like we actually get to attack twice in a row. So let's go for that. Super effective, nice. And we still get to go for one more. So this time it's gonna be a regular power one. No agile, no strong style needed. Zoroark is down. That went a lot smoother than against Gudra. Steel Dragon type is just so good, dude. Knew you could do it, Orenji. You feel a mysterious presence. It's time for Uxie. Not my favorite of the trio, but being the being of knowledge, I gotta respect it. Come, I will test your knowledge. Oh no, is this gonna be like a quiz? Kobe Zubat, unknown Magneton Dust Clops. How many are their eyes? Tell me each one by one, yet all at once. Answer me! Uh, can you repeat? <laughs> so, Komi has two eyes? Or is it three? Zubat has none. Unknown has one, so three total. Magneton definitely has three? So that's six so far. And then Dusclops is another one. So that's seven in total, I think. Unless we have to answer one by one. Oh, enter your answers as a series of... Oh my gosh. This is actually complicated. What the frick? 
So Combi's two, Zubat was zero, and then I think third was, no, it wasn't Magneton. There was Unknown, I think, then Magneton, and Dusclops. So two, zero, one, three, one. I really hope that's right. Answer me true, if answer you would. Oh, I got it wrong? What the frick, dude? Oh my god, Combi has six eyes. What the frick? You guys were probably face palming in the comments. Okay, so it's six, zero, one, three, one. Yes, we got it. That really confused me. Oh, that's it. Nice. Only one question. Thank goodness. Well, that was kind of fun. Would have been cool if they came up with a couple more riddles as we get Yuxi's claw. Why does it look like a little envelope? Unless the claw is in there. I guess that makes sense. We wouldn't just want to carry around a random fingernail. Just one more to go. If only it were that simple. You know we got a whole bunch more cutscenes to go through. I assume all went well? Still, I must wonder. Why don't they just give us the red chain? Why all this running about? Dude! I guess I can think of two reasons. To keep the chain safe and to test us. Perhaps you're right. Who knows what would happen if it fell into the wrong hands after all. You're not even lifting a finger. Why are you complaining? Though, having said that, isn't the red chain for mending the world? What use would some villain have for it? Oh, he doesn't know. Who can say for sure? Maybe the red chain has some other use besides mending the world. You could be right. I guess we'll have no way of knowing until we get it for ourselves. So, shall we return? Alright, fine. I wish we didn't have to, but... Wonderful! Then we can see if Mistress Kohita has any more insight to share. Why am I getting a strange feeling from Volo? Almost like he's jealous that we're the ones saving the world. Whoa. Did the music just change? Oh, yeah. That sounds like Rayquaza's coming. So that's Yuxi's claw. I sense a warmth to it. What? A claw is warm? The Pokemon of the lakes are strange. They seem to play with our minds somehow. Oh, wait, this is Automon. Whoops. Indeed, yet we may want to add just a dash more speed. Things in Jubilife are tense. What makes you say so? Yeah, you've been with us the whole time. How do you know? It seems a Pokemon's been glimpsed on the other side of the rift. What? One of those Ginkgo Guild merchants informed me that Commander Kamado has raised a force not to survey the Pokemon, but to subdue it should the need arise. One of those ginkgo merchants? You make it sound as if you're not one of them. Now, if a Pokemon truly were to appear from beyond the rift, what would become of everyone, I wonder? That settles it, Orenji. There's no time to lose. We've got one material left for the red chain. Let's get it! That's the spirit. Watch, is that all you really do? Remember, once you've sought the third lake and found what's needed for the red chain, make for the shrouded ruins. Dude, I feel like Kohita's just over it. I mean, if she really is Cynthia, I feel like she's thinking, I've been through this already, twice, with Cyrus, and then in the past of Hisui, if my theory is correct. And it also makes sense why she's so disappointed in Volo, because it's like her ancestor and she's the champion, so she's like, you're freaking useless compared to me, dude. Like, come on, live up to the name. Anyway, we're here in the Crimson Mirelands, and thankfully we've got the Diamond Settlement right next to the lake. I just realized that, too. The Diamond and Pearl Settlements are both next to one of the lakes. I'm pretty sure they did that on purpose. Or, well, maybe they settled there on purpose because they wanted to be near the Lake Guardians. I don't really know. But we also never really explored this lake before. I wonder if, yes, there are indeed some Pokemon. Whiskash. Were there even Pokemon in the water at Lake Verity? I know there were Rufflets in Acuity, but I don't remember about Verity. Anyway, do you know about Lake Valor? It's said to have been formed by Volcanic and Bruh. Though there are also other theories that say it was carved out in the midst of a Pokemon battle. This lake is protected by the Pokemon Azelf. How do you know these things? When Azelf took flight, the will to do what needs doing was born in people's hearts. Or that's what legend would have us believe. 
Oh god, here we go again. You little nasty, just get it over with already. Can't believe it. Can't believe Arceus, honestly. He's the one sending us all these messages after all. A cave appears where there was none, as if just for a Renji. In we go. I imagine strong Pokemon could wait inside, protecting the Pokemon of the lake. Take care. Okay, so I guess he actually talks as if every lake is your first one, so they didn't have to make unique dialogue for each encounter. But here we are. Well, let's see what we're up against. I'm gonna guess Quillfish? Yes! I guessed it because this is the only Hisuian form that we hadn't seen naturally yet. And the other two were Gudra and Zoroark. Watch it, Orenji. I've heard about this one from my grandfather. Those quills, they're venomous. Automon's grandpa, huh? I think the Diamond Clan members had a picture of Alder up in their tents. Maybe that's Automon's grandpa. Fishy me! <laughs> what? You want me to fish you? Is that what you're saying, dude? Oh, no. I should have led with uh, Koda again. Because this guy is a dark and poison type. Is it just me or... Okay, never mind. It felt for a little bit like the cave music and the battle music were overlapping. It still kind of sounds like there's two songs going on at once. I don't know. Maybe this song is just weird. But yeah, this thing actually isn't a water type, so... We can go for a Aqua Tail here, and if it does more than half, then... Okay, never mind. This thing is actually very, very tanky, so... Oh, we could have gone a Sword Stance Agile style, and then a strong Aqua Tail. That would have done probably more damage, so... Whatever. Let's just go strong style Aqua Tail now. Charlie's probably gonna get knocked out, but... It's fine. Someone else can come in and finish the job for us. Uh, doesn't feel good to keep losing Charlie, though, I'll admit. So it's all up to you, Scarlet. You haven't had a chance to actually beat anything yet, so I guess this works out. Even though these aren't very effective either. I guess the Swift is. Let's go for a strong style Swift. Even though Swift is, like, not a very powerful move on its own. But it's good enough. Especially since Zoroark is normal type. Not the most experienced there from Quillfish, I gotta say. The final... Pokemon of the lake awaits as we once again feel that mysterious presence. It's Azulf. Actually, my favorite. I don't even know why I have a favorite of these, but... Show me unyielding will. Strike me if you can. Oh, you want to fight, bro? What? It's a noble? Did those bombs just appear out of nowhere? I guess you're meant to throw them at Azulf. Well, this is fitting that we went for Azulf last. Whoa, does it teleport around? Like, oh, that's so cool. It's like Mew in Pokemon Snap. And what? It goes away so quickly. Bro, come on. Or am I actually hitting it? Hold up. Oh, wait, what? No, yeah, I think it was just teleporting over and over. Excuse me? You seem to hear a voice inside your head. Will you abandon this folly? No? I'm not done yet, what the frick? I'm guessing this is part of the test, like, to see how much will we have. Or maybe just patience is more like it. Okay, what happens if I don't throw the bomb and just keep waiting? Oh, it just sits there, what the heck? So unless we, like, throw the bomb, it doesn't even disappear. Alright, I'm pretty sure this is the test, it's just, will you keep saying yes? Because you have the will to keep going. It seems you'd best give up. Will you continue regardless? I'm not through yet. Come on. I got the patience of a saint and the will of a smith. Oh, come on. All right, what if we throw it like over here? Oh, okay. At least you actually have to aim it at it. I thought for a second it didn't even matter where you throw them. But no, it definitely does. So there we go. We threw three more. Now, please tell me this is it. Yes, we get it. Give up, you struggle in vain. Will you yet press on? Oh my gosh. Now I don't even know. I'm second guessing myself. But I feel like this is part of the test. Oh man, I thought that was it. Because it kind of like zoomed in on his... Oh. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that was it. 
Azov has finally seen that we have the will to keep going. Take this piece of the spirit to bind the world once more. What's it gonna be this time? Azov's earlobe? <laughs> That'd be pretty weird. Oh, of course, it's a fang. We got a feather, a claw, and a fang. Proof that we've completed the third trial and now we can finally make the red chain. Looks like our lake journey's complete. Indeed. Please, I need to go to sleep. It seems we finished the three lake trials. If I remember correctly, we were told to then head for the shrouded ruins. I don't know what could await us there, but I'm always excited to explore some ancient ruins. Let us be on our way. So we're going straight there? No stopping by Kobihas? Or whatever her name? Oh wait, the shrouded ruins. That that's literally what he said. Mist is so very good at obscuring things, it's long been said to blur boundaries. If we're to somehow bring together the world of humans, the world of Pokemon, and the world of myth, then maybe we need a setting such as this. That being said, what are we meant to do now? Seems I've made it in time, oh my god. I didn't know she could even leave her house. Showing up only when time's right, huh? With age comes wisdom, I guess. I had the aid of a rather remarkable Pokemon, if you really wish to know. Was it Garchomp, though? Right, but how do we make this red chain? I would hardly know. What? We speak of a divine instrument, one said to be capable of finding the very world. Do you really imagine it can be forged by mortal hands? Then what are we doing? We don't have any more time to waste! Uh-oh. Who's here to crash our party? Is it an unknown? Oh! Of course! Ah! The Pokémon of the lakes! Ultra Instinct! Oh wait, I guess that'd be more like Kaioken. They've done it! From their body parts, they have forged the red chain! That's so weird. Why did you even give us the little envelopes then, if you were just gonna forge it for us anyway? So it was true. The pact of our people have passed down for all these generations has been kept. At last, I can set this burden aside. You succeeded once again, Orenji. Yet, things don't seem to be going so well for the rest of the world. What's that supposed to mean? Yeah, seriously. I've had some news from my fellow merchants. It seems the commander is going to forego waiting for our investigation to finish. He plans to climb Mount Corda himself. Why? Dude, what is he thinking? Even if he makes it up there, what can he do against a giant rift in space-time? Well, he doesn't net yet know that Orenji has managed to get the red chain now, does he? That's right. We've got to let him know that it'll be alright now that we have the red chain. Even the commander should see reason then and call off this foolhardy plan of his. How do we even know what to do with it? It's literally a chain. What? Oh no, Akari. What's happening? Is the army getting ready? Orenji? That's right, I'm back! Welcome back! It's been grim here. We in the Survey Corps hardly even speak to one another. But with you back, maybe Captain Silene's appetite for potato mochi will Bro, do you not see what's happening? The sky and everything around us. Anyway, wait here a minute, will ya? I'll go and let the captain know you're back. I don't know if that's a great idea. I feel like we should just go stop the Calamity first and... Oh, well, too late. My dear Orenji! The professor's been awfully worried about you. Of course I was worried, but I don't think I could hold a candle to the distress you showed, Akari. That's blowing it out of proportion. I don't think it's appropriate for an adult to make things up just to hide their embarrassment. What? But uh, where's the captain? Wasn't she coming along with you? She's buried under a mound of work, I'm afraid. We're to join her in the Survey Corps office. Seems her hands are more full now than Commander Kamado's gone. Wait, he's not here? 
Well, he set out for Mount Coronet with the Survey Corps. He's determined to handle this whole space-time rift business himself, including dealing with the Pokémon that's been spotted on the other side. And that's why I was filling in for regular guards with Pikachu at the ready! Well, we aren't getting anywhere out here. Let's head inside and report to the captain! Please tell me I get to save, oh my goodness. Of course. So you managed not to die, just as I ordered. Well done. Thanks to you, Captain. I mean, I guess Audemon kinda helped. For once. No doubt your own past deeds earned you any help you may have received. Before moving forward, I must ask. I assume that you're here again because you've managed to learn something of use? I mean, I got this chain. I don't know what I'm supposed to do with it, but go on. You explain about the chain. A legendary tool said to bind the very world. Commander Kamado is no longer here in the village. The security corps has been scouting the area near the space-time rift, and they reported sightings of something on the other side of it. Something that resembled a Pokemon. Yes, so we've heard. The commander made the decision to take the security corps to the mountains so as to prepare to fend off any possible threat. They were to make for the temple at the peak. However strong the commander himself may be, he should have gotten a Renji to help. For real! As the captain of the Survey Corps, I hereby order you to proceed as follows. But I'm no longer in the Survey Corps. So, do I really have to listen? Take that red chain to Mount Cordet. Make your way to the peak and put an end to all this. You are officially reinstated at your former rank. Oh, hell yeah! Silene, looking out for us. Are you certain you can do that with the commander away, Captain? Bro, why are you even questioning this? Just let Silene be Silene. If he didn't wish me to decide things in his place, then he shouldn't have let me in. Shouldn't have let me in. Ch <laughs> I can't even read at this point, dude. It's too much dialogue and it's pretty late out here. But he shouldn't have left me in charge here. Then I'll go as well. We're all in this together, members of the Survey Corps. Okay, let's go. Oh, finally. Wait, what? There's like, oh, never mind. It's the usual. What the heck? Why is there a Lucario here? Well, I guess now we can actually do our side quest, even with the rift in the sky? Or maybe as soon as we step outside. I wonder. Uh, yeah, I think things are... Pretty much back to normal, so we could have gotten our Mo Rotom now. So I really didn't need to do all that, did I? Well, that was quite the episode. I'm sure it's going to be the longest one in the series so far, but I feel like knocking out all that story in one go is probably the best call. So next episode, we can either wrap up all the side quests or just continue with the story. Let me know what you want to see in the comments below, and I'll catch you then.